not have heard of Dana White, but if you've heard of the UFC, Conor McGregor or Ronda Rousey, then you will be familiar with our next guesswork. Brutal. He's Colourful. Controversial. Conor McGregor was in court today after attacking a bus full of UFC athletes. Starting off as a one-off mixed martial arts pay-per-view experiment in 1993, the UFC was a niche operation until 2001, when Dana White bought the brand as part of a consortium and became president. I'm the boss. It's my way and no other way. End of story, you know? On White's watch, the UFC combined pro wrestling style showmanship, impressive athleticism, and to its critics, confronting brutality. Oh, 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 the result? An explosion in popularity with the UFC hitting the mainstream harder than this poor bloke's oh, nether regions, oh, oh. becoming a five and a half billion dollar business, making White worth a reported seven hundred million dollars in household names out of its biggest stars. Ronda Rousey, the fighter. I love her. Get in the car. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize. To absolutely nobody! And now the carnival's making its latest trip to Australia with Aussie up and comer Tai Tuavasa becoming the first Indigenous Australian to headline a UFC event. By TKO Tai! Bam Bam! Tuivasa! Strap yourself in, it's gonna be on like Kong. Would you please welcome Dana White? Welcome, welcome, Dana. The UFC is Thank on you. its way to Adelaide. What made you choose the City of Churches as your destination? <laughs> well, this country's been very good to us. Uh, every, every time we have a fight in the UFC, it's incredible here in Australia. And uh, we, we, we want to go everywhere. We want to travel everywhere and continue to do fights all over the country. Dana, Ty Tuivas is making a bit of a name for himself by doing shoeies after his fight. Uh, are you a fan of the Aussie custom? Uh, I'm not interested in doing it, but uh, yeah, sure, whatever, whatever you're into. <laughs> well, we've got you here, Dana, I believe you have a very special announcement for us uh, tonight on the project. Yeah, so we're going to Melbourne February 10th, and uh, the headliner is going to be Australia's first ever UFC champion, Robert Whitaker, taking on Kelvin Gastelum. Oh, so we might see another shoey. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. But what you're going to see is an uh, incredible fight. Both guys are knockout artists. Both guys like to stand up and bang. And uh, it, it seems like every time we do fights here in Australia, the fighters never disappoint. The fights are always incredible here. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, Dana, I need you to level with me. We're talking yes. Conor McGregor. We're talking Nurmagomedov, we're talking that whole saga, all right? So okay. there's the bus incident where McGregor attacks a, a bus full of fighters. Uh, you get really upset about that. Then there's the incident after the, the fight uh, where Nurmagomedov's blokes come into the ring and there's a scuffle after the fight in the ring from their supporters. Uh, at that time, you were livid about this. This is what you said. It's a very bad night. Super duper, really super bad. I mean, there's going to be an investigation. These guys are in big trouble. I'm calling this. I can see a smirk on your face as you say this. <laughs> and then I, I, I don't know if there have been any real punishments handed out to these guys, the big price that they've paid. Let's just be totally honest. Let's be real. You love this stuff. And it's great for promotions, <laughs> right? Well, let me tell you what. We have a hearing in front of the Nevada State Athletic Commission that's coming up in uh, December. And then they will lay down fines, um, uh, suspensions and whatever else they're going to do. They were actually coming after me too for the promotion of the fight. So, no, it, it was a bad night. And, and believe me, er everybody asked me this question. You know, yeah, it, you know, this happened and it was bad, but it's good for your business. Uh, it, it's really not good for business when things like that happen. Uh, we don't need that type of stuff to sell a fight. But you don't so, suspend them. Uh, you don't, you don't do any... And then in the, the bus situation where McGregor's attacking that bus, there's, like, high-def cameras ready to capture it, capture it like, so that it, the, the image, the vision's great. Like, it just, it just yeah. looks like you're all over this. Well, well, we do a show called UFC Embedded where we follow the fighters around. So those cameras were there when, when that happened because of that. But do you understand? He got arrested. He went to jail. He, he had to go before the New York... You know, Attorney General and, and, and 
so what, they already took care of it. What am I going to do? No, but what, you what's could, the suspension yeah, going to do? But you could say he was suspended. Yeah, he yeah. was suspended. He he couldn't fight because he was in jail. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get yeah. it. I get it. So the state suspended him, and you said come back and fight again. That's what happened. Yeah. And like you know, yeah. if that's if that's what you want to do, like great. I'm not necessarily criticizing. It. I just want you to level with us and just say, but this I'm is leveling. the way it is. That, that's that's what I do. I put on fights. This guy got arrested. He was put. We was down there because we were supposed to be talking about a fight that he was going to be in. He come and attacked the bus. He got arrested and went to jail. Now. We're overseen by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So these guys can't fight. They're both on suspension. They're going to get fined a certain amount of money, whatever that number is that they suggest. And then there's going to be a suspension held out. That's what Nevada does. That, that they, they govern us. So, so what else am I going to do? Suspend them for another year? It doesn't make sense. Dana, you've got to have some sympathy for any, whoever shared a cell with uh, Conor McGregor, don't you? Did you check on them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, actually, Connor would actually probably be fun in jail. <laughs> I know you're saying that it is all real, but it feels like the fighting bit is real, but the rest of it is just a little bit of showbiz. Let me tell you what, reality is better than any script you could ever write. If you think that we would put our, our, our top guy in a position where he attacks a bus, hurts other fighters, then gets sued by all of them and gets arrested, we're not that good. <laughs> uh, I'm interested in the evolution of the sport. So 10 years ago, a UFC fighter looked a particular way, uh, and then as it's gone on, you've had to see fighters adapt and, and bring in other skill sets. What do you reckon a UFC fighter looks like and, and how they fight in 10 years' time? Oh, you know, what's happening is, is the level of athlete keeps going up because, you know, people who would have played soccer or rugby or other sports here in this country are now training to become mixed martial artists. So you have... A, a, a much higher level of athlete and I think that's going to continue I think that you're going to continue to see things that we never saw before just like in basketball or football or any other sport you, you, you have Odell Beckham Jr. from the United States catching footballs with one hand you know you look at LeBron James and see what this guy's able to do that's the way this sport is going to continue to uh, uh, evolve too. Well you please thank Dana White. Thank you. Into the ropes. Oh, she almost sliced her in half with that clothesline.